All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna spend a little bit of time trying to clean a few comics that I have set off to the side here. And I'm gonna clean those comics using some items that I've assembled in this little kit. I'll open this kit up. We'll look at some of the things that are in here and then we're going to use those things to basically clean a couple of comics. And so I have a modern comic as well as some other comics with a few problems, with a few defects, and we will see uh, how well we can address some of those defects. Uh, and I think we'll, we'll probably go through about three examples and I will try to pepper into this thing as much detailed information as I possibly can with the hope that it's actually going to help some folks out there that are trying to clean their own comics. And so one of the things that is in here is, is a pair of gloves, of course. I think gloves are super helpful if, um, if you want to keep your your, your your oils from your hand from transferring to the comic. So it's definitely a good thing to use. Uh, I tend to, to alternate, right? Depending upon what I'm cleaning and the value of those things, I will sometimes use the gloves. A lot of times I will just wash my hands as I work on a comic and that that suffices for me uh, but but I think everyone has to do uh, what what makes sense for them so there's a little sticker in there um, there's let me see what else we have in here there's a couple of little uh, brushes and things like that that I have in there and you'll you'll see why those are helpful in just a second it's a larger one there um, if you've watched some of my other videos, some of the next few things that I'll pull out of here, well, you'll recognize this is a, a microfiber cleaning cloth. I am a huge fan of these things. I think that they are, that they are awesome. Um, in the past, I've used things like uh, old wash rags from my children. And because it's a microfiber, it's very soft. It's very clean. Uh, but these are a couple that I ended up picking up. There is a magic eraser in here. And this thing is these are really really awesome um they are awesome for removing some of the more stubborn stains and debris that may be found on comics very very helpful and there's there's a couple of videos on the channel here in which i actually use magic erasers and show you specifically how to use them I'm not sure if we'll get to that in this video in much detail but there are other videos here on the channel that uh go into a little bit more detail on how to use those there's a few more items in, in the bag here. Set that off to the side. Uh, this is basically an art eraser. This thing is actually filled with uh, basically smaller versions of this thing. Uh, and th this bag works really, really well for removing a lot of dirt and debris from a comic. And this thing will not stretch the comic in any way. I've used it on lots of comics. I've never had any issues, but we're going to demonstrate how to use this little sack here in a second. But then there's also an art gum eraser in here. Um, these, these things are really helpful as well. And so a couple of little little options here for removing stains from the, from the art gum eraser to the little sack that contains basically smaller versions of this eraser to a magic eraser, all of which work really well for different types of stains. And then I've also put in here a, a little stencil, and this is a, a stainless steel stencil that I've found is really helpful for isolating little areas that you actually want to work on on a comic. You can basically put the stencil down and kind of work within one of these little cutout shapes to, to address a stain or writing or whatever may be the defect that you find on a comic. I think these things are really helpful, but but um, this is just one way that you can isolate an area. Another way is just using a regular backing board. Backing boards are uh, plenty, right? As a comic book collector, you can find these just about anywhere in anyone's comic book room. There's a ton of these things laying around. And so you can use something like this as well to be able to isolate areas of a comic, or you can use the, the stencil to be able to you know work in a much smaller area without fear of damaging anything in the the vicinity of where you're working so right here we basically have a modern comic and and this honestly could be a comic that you picked up last week that uh, may have some damage right um, this is you know x-men fantastic four issue number three really cool cover here uh, but but it has some some clear defects right here on the left side of the spine. Pretty much uh, the entire spine is is um, is defective, and hopefully you should be able to see those on the camera there. 
Uh, the back is relatively fine. Again, brand new comic. There's a little bit of waviness to the paper that you can probably see some vertical waves. This is a book that potentially if I were to send it off to CGC, I would probably press it just because that waviness might actually bother me. I might actually try to, uh, to press those defects out. But as you know, the first thing that you want to do before you actually press a book is to clean a book. But I will say that if you are interested in uh, pressing, there are other videos on the channel that actually talk about how to properly uh, press a comic. One of the very first things that I, I think you want to do is to use something like the microfiber cloth to try to remove as much debris and dust from the comic as you possibly can. And this is this is something that you can do with any type of comic before you start to use maybe some of the more aggressive types of, of removal. One of the, the easiest forms of removal, uh, mechanical removal, is just using a microfiber cloth. And you can just wipe the comic a couple of times and you'll be surprised in some cases just how much dirt and debris you can actually remove. <laughs> So I don't think that that removed anything from this particular comic, but that's okay. We had to at least try to use the microfiber uh, because again, in, in some cases, this thing is very effective for removing little amounts of surface dirt. Certainly fingerprints and, and inks from one's fingers can be removed using uh, a microfiber very, very easily. Um, but because that didn't necessarily do what we needed it to do, we're going to we're gonna step it up just a little bit and we're actually going to use the little pouch here. And I probably should cut these little strings off, but that's not really a big deal. But what you want to do is you basically want to crumble this bag up just a little bit. And hopefully what you are seeing on the surface there is you are basically seeing some debris basically fall out of this sack. And it is, again, small powder form of this art gum eraser is basically what you're seeing right there on that surface. And it's essentially that powder with the mechanical movement of me rubbing the sack across the, the comic that is actually going to remove some of that surface debris that you see over here on the right. But again, the, the crumbling is the first thing that you want to do to be able to get some of that uh, powder on the comic. And then you basically just want to rub the comic ever so gently. And, and I do try to, as best I can, kind of move things in one direction I'm trying to be as gentle as possible and I'm trying not to put too much pressure on, on the spine or the comic itself. I'm, I'm kind of sort of allowing the, the gum debris here to actually do its job. And hopefully what you are actually seeing is that the stains that are on this comic are actually getting a little lighter. They are fading ever so slightly as I continue to work my way back and forth across this, this comic. And again, this is one of those things that works incredibly well. And what you're what you're noticing here is that yes, I am going over the white parts of this comic, but I could very easily go over the color parts of this comic without fear of damaging the the inks. This is this works incredibly well for being able to work not just in the white areas of a comic, but also in the areas that have inks as well. And, and that cannot be said for the Magic Eraser. The Magic Eraser is fantastic for working the back sides of a comic, which are oftentimes white, but using it in, in an area where there are inks, you are definitely putting the comic at risk because this thing is abrasive and it can remove inks from uh, from a comic book. And I actually showed that in a previous video. I've shown exactly how easy it is to have the magic eraser remove ink from a modern book. It only takes a swipe and you can strip color off. Whereas with one of the older comics, because of the types of paper, because of the types of inks, these comics are, are much more durable than in than a modern comic. I can tell you that for a fact. So we, we've cleaned that area just a little bit and I'm actually going to use my little uh, handy dandy brush here to remove some of the debris from the area to kind of see what we're working with. And uh, hopefully you can see that those areas have, have been dramatically improved. 
They have been dramatically improved over what they looked like just a few moments ago. There is still some work to be done. <laughs> I, uh, I was able to get it pretty well, so I'm actually going to pick up some of this debris from the sides that I just kind of brushed off. I'm going to put it back on the comic because I continue to use uh, those those crumbs, if you will, they will continue to work and I'm going to continue to kind of work my way down the spine. I will also give you a, a cautionary note here. Uh, one of the things that I will sometimes do when I'm working with this, this sack is that I will actually wear a face mask. The, the particles that come off of this are pretty fine and I found that, um, they can get in my in my throat and cause a little bit of irritation. So you may want to uh, to take a little precaution and wear a face mask if you have uh, you know any respiratory issues or just want to avoid having uh, you know these little fine particles in your throat. That that is working incredibly well. It is working incredibly well. And I want to say that this is the smaller uh, sack. I think it's like a 3.5 ounce. And, and again, this thing works works really, really well for removing all types of defects from a comic. I've been using it extensively for a few months, trying out uh, the, the sack on different types of comic books of different ages, different types of stains and things like that. Just trying to, to put it to put it to a test to make sure that it, uh, it that it works so we can see and again I'm not being the most careful with this but you can see that the stains that were once there have been removed I think there's a little bit more work that I can do in this area right here but uh, maybe even around the staple but generally speaking you know I can definitely work down here that needs some work but up here this comic is not looking bad on that spine there's definitely some stains here and some stains down here that we can probably work on as well and uh, some people will ask you know is it necessary to just work the comic in in one area is it okay to go back and forth or crisscross and things like that uh, you know I don't know that I have seen any kind of detrimental effects to uh, going back and forth or or this way back and forth I, I just find that I'm a little bit more careful about what I'm doing when I'm working in one direction, I'm lifting it up and I'm moving it back. I just feel like I'm, I'm taking a little bit more care than if I were to just do this. And I feel like I would be a little more aggressive, I think, if I were doing that versus more, a little more gentle type of movement. Uh, just going up and down and and again this this is possibly just personal preference I think if you have a desire to 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 work it in another direction try it and see if it works and, and if you get good results then it, it is something that works but this is again this is just something that I've been doing and I and I find uh, that it works for me so let's take a look at that really quickly and again it, it uh, that is working incredibly well we definitely have some debris here all over this comic so we're going to try to remove a little bit of that debris the the gum eraser is uh, or the sack with the gum powder is not uh, the cleanest things not the cleanest thing to work with which is why I have the little uh, brushes in here and again if you're working potentially in some smaller areas you can use uh, the other options that uh, that are in here as well and they, they all kind of work they all serve the same purpose of basically removing debris uh, and, and the same thing with the rag here, which you just have to shake out occasionally. And and one of the things that I, I don't do is I, I try not to blow on the comic as best I can because, you know, moisture from your mouth gets on the comic, never necessarily a good thing. So I try to avoid that. Uh, and I just try to use uh, one of these tools here to kind of clean the comic off. But there you go. That is that is an example of how the sack here works well on being able to remove stains from a comic. And again, this comic actually came to me that way. I actually picked it up from someone and it literally came with those defects all on the spine. And before you know, with a little bit of work, we were able to get the uh, the comic clean and, and have it looking pretty good. And again, I, if I were doing this the right way without the camera being on, I would literally clean the entire cover. 
I would clean the entire cover from top to bottom and I would just kind of work my way through it. And again, one of the other things that I could have done was to put the, the stencil over top. Um, but again, with anything that is that is metal or plastic or has the potential to scratch a comic, you definitely want to be careful, which is why a backing board can oftentimes come in handy, especially if you're working on a, a modern comic book. All right, so now that we've uh, taken care of the modern comic, let's go ahead and, and take a look at another comic book over here. This is one that you've probably seen in previous videos, uh, and i actually show you uh, the, the defect that I introduced to this particular comic the last time that I cleaned it. You can see right there, hopefully you can see right there, there is a, uh, on Chewbacca, there is a, a removal of the inks right there. I, I used a magic eraser and just kind of scrubbed and it took some effort. It, it honestly took some effort to actually remove that ink from this comic versus a modern comic with just a couple of rubs. I actually removed some color. So this thing is definitely a little, little more stubborn than, uh, than a modern comic, but uh, we are going to clean this one. And basically what I've done is I've swept up some of the gum from the sack that was left over from the last comic and I've swept it onto the, uh, the backing board here. And I'm basically just going to transfer that. I'm going to transfer all of that debris down to the next comic because I am basically going to repurpose that. I'm going to repurpose that debris in order to actually clean the next comic. So instead of having to squeeze it and kind of grind some out with the sack, I'm just going to use it. And, and hopefully you actually saw that this book is not necessarily the cleanest book to begin with. But I'm basically just going to do uh, what we did before, which is to do a little bit of cleaning on this comic and uh, see if we can make it look a little bit better from the way that it looked originally. But I'm basically doing the exact same thing that I did before. And I probably need to be a little bit more gentle <laughs> than I was there a second ago. Um, but again, when, when you're doing this yourself for uh, with your own comics, you definitely want to take a lot more care than maybe what I'm taking here right now. You know, what I would potentially do, honestly, is I would potentially have a glove on and I would be holding the book and I would be working in a much, much smaller area versus kind of how I'm doing it right now. I would even potentially take out a backing board and place the backing board down and kind of rest my hand on the backing board. And that way I'm essentially working the top fourth of the book or whatever, top half almost of the book. And I would just basically work this top part and then I would see how it looks. And then I would, you know, shift down the comic and continue to kind of work my way down it. But again, for the purpose of what we're doing here in this video, I'm just kind of taking a couple of shortcuts here, but you can see a lot of dirty debris coming off of this comic as we are removing some surface dirt and things like that. And you might actually also be able to see that the sack gets a little dirty because of how dirty this comic actually is. This thing is, again, just a really great tool uh, that I've been using consistently for, for months to clean comics and then send those comics into uh, to CGC in some cases. Again, if you guys are following my channel, you know that I've um, been sending a healthy amount of books into CGC, and I've actually opted to let them clean and press a lot of the books just because I honestly have not had the time to, uh, to go through the, the full process myself. But um, first world problems, right? So that book is looking a whole lot better looking a whole lot better there now definitely looking um pretty good it's a pretty good looking book but on the backhand side you can see that the back is also a little dirty and what i wanted to do back here is there are some numbers here uh one dollar we're going to try to remove that that is um some pencil and we're going to try to remove that and again this thing works works really well but instead of using the the sack here which i think could remove it relatively easily i am actually going to try to use the gummy eraser we're going to use the gummy eraser to to basically work this small area and remove that um that handwritten number there <laughs> And again, it's just one of those things that um, illustrates that there are lots of different ways to remove 
the defects from a comic, you can certainly have used something like that. But let's say that this was the only defect. It was just a small little bit of writing and you didn't want to make that type of mess. You just wanted to clean that one little area. The gum eraser comes in quite handy for just removing those very, very small um, those small defects, but again, like everything else, you definitely want to be very careful and you may not be able to see that on camera, but I'm actually just going in one direction here as I attempt to remove the writing from the comic. And that came off very, very nicely. Let's get a good look at that. Yeah, that came off very, very nicely. You can still see uh, potentially on camera that there is um, some marks from where the one was written. Definitely a defect introduced to the comic because of the pressure of, of the written number. But that is something that can probably be removed again through pressing if you were to put a backing board behind this front cover and um and press it out you would probably be able to remove that that indentation from the number one as well as the many other defects that are seen on the back of this book and at a minimum you would be able to improve uh the appearance of the comic with with being able to clean this entire thing and then pressing it out that would actually be a really decent looking comic it, well before i introduce that defect right there but again just wanted to kind of show uh, how to potentially use these different options and to be honest with you if if uh, if necessary some of these stains are are in there pretty aggressively what I what I could have done was to use something like the magic eraser and, and what I like to do with the magic eraser for example is I will use my backing board because I, I use this in a larger area I will use the backing board to basically block off the areas of the comic that have inks, right? I don't want to damage any of this here. And so I will use the backing board to basically block off that area. And then of course I would use my hand, right? To hold that in place. And I would basically just work this edge and I would work it in one direction, maybe the top half of it or so, or the top fourth, work my way down to the second, fourth, et cetera, et cetera, work my way all the way down. And uh, you, you, would be, you would be amazed at how clean the magic eraser will actually get that. But again, this, this is an option that works incredibly well, but it is an abrasive just like these other things, just like the gum eraser, just like the sack, they are all uh, abrasive. When you use them, you want to take some care. All right. So just an example. And what I would ultimately do with this thing is I would not use this whole thing and work my way down. What I would probably do would be to break off a small portion of this thing. And I would just use like a very small portion of it. That way I have control of it. That way I'm able to really focus my efforts and where I want them to be. And I can take a little bit more care than if I were to use this whole brick and try to work that, that area, right? So, you know, again, using the gum eraser really small, using this thing really small. This one is, again, a little bit more of a, a blunt tool, but it is possibly the least abrasive out of the different options that I'm showing here, of course, besides the the microfiber cloth but wanted to kind of show potentially how you could use the magic eraser to work the back of a comic so next up is is another comic here that has just just lots of defects invaders 11 this thing has has a spine roll i mean it it has rust on the staples this this book is in rough shape this is in rough shape and, and to be honest with you when you look at this book you know, th this book has just, it has so many defects that this is never going to be a 9.8. This is never going to be a high grade book because these are stains, if, if you were to feel this, that are raised from the surface, right? The, these stains are in many ways encrusted on here. Uh, there's maybe some water damage here. I mean, and I've heard that there's ways to remove water damage. I, I don't have the patience nor the desire to do that. Uh, but but my point is that there are lots of defects here that will not be fixed by anything that is sitting on this table. What you can hope for is to improve the appearance of this book. That is something that aspirationally you can actually aim for. This book will take some time. And what you would probably do, uh, as I've demonstrated already, is to basically work in small sections of this book. 
This is probably not a book that you will do in one sitting. This is going to take some time. It is going to take a combination of the different resources that you have here on the table to actually do it the right way. Uh, but I, I feel confident that with, with some work, with some desire, this book's appearance could be dramatically improved, not just from the defects that we see here from the dirt and debris, but also from, from the spine roll, through the pressing process, a lot of these defects can be improved. They will they will not all go away, but they can definitely be improved. And I mean, there's a dog ear that's going on over here. I mean, the, the top staple you can see is, is all the way over here. The bottom staple is a little bit more to the left. So the spine roll could be fixed, but the spine roll will never go away because the two staples are actually in the wrong place. This one again is more to the left. This one is more to the right. So you hopefully can split it somewhere in the middle and maybe get this bottom staple at least a little bit more to to the side of the book side slash back of the book and maybe improve uh, the spine roll just a little bit but what i would do for a book like this honestly is i probably would just skip the the wiping of the comic right because that's that's only going to do so much what i would do is i would use this and i would just crumble a lot of the the uh, gum powder onto this comic and you can see it building up. I would just spread this on there and then I would just start to slowly work this comic and try to remove as much of the stains as I possibly can. And again, this is this this works incredibly well. This is this is a tool that is definitely a a large area type of tool. Probably block it off, of course, with uh, with my backing board, and I would kind of work my way through this. But you know, you can actually see some of the dirt lifting up as I as I do this. Uh, but again, the, the stains in this book are are pretty pretty heavy. They're they're pretty well set, but there there is a little there's a little improvement here. A little improvement here. So if you do happen to own some books that uh, have lots of defects, again, the, the resources that are here on the table will definitely help. And uh, one of the other pieces of advice that I can give is that you wanna try to use you know, something like this first, and then as you clean it and you find these areas that require additional work, you basically want to, you know, remove all of that and then you want to maybe go to the next more aggressive approach and then just kind of continue up and work your way through. Again, with each one of these steps, you can probably remove a little bit more of the crud uh, that sits on the, the surface of the comic. And again, hopefully in the end, you will you will have a comic that will look a, a lot better than than when you actually started working on it. At, at the end of the day, that's what this is about, is about trying to improve the overall overall appearance and quality of the comic. You can see that what's coming off of this comic actually isn't as bad as what came off the Star Wars book. Uh, but but it is it is both both of them are pretty bad. Both of them are pretty bad. So again, there there are a lot of defects that are on this book and uh, the best that you can hope for is to improve the overall appearance of this comic. But I wanna thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that some of the things that are demonstrated in this video will be helpful to you as you continue to uh, learn how to clean and, and potentially even press your own comics. Um, certainly if there's any tips and pointers that you guys might need for me, don't hesitate to leave some of those questions and comments down in the comment section, and I will attempt to address them as best I can. Mm -hmm.